Welcome to this segment of Soul, Silence, and Sound. This is brought to you by Be Simply. Stars, trees, clouds, and the moon. They all have a meaning and they look just like you. Welcome to this segment of Soul and Luna Cycles. This is part of the Soul, Silence, and Sound Weekly Talks. And this is brought to you by Be Simply. Today, we're almost at the new moon here in the Northern Hemisphere. And it will be arriving shortly from the moment I'm recording this at approximately 11.23 Kronos time a.m., And there's also this other moment that's happening that's had a lot of uh, interesting light shined upon it, a solar eclipse. So we just had a lunar eclipse, supposedly, and now we are having a solar eclipse. They call it eclipse season. So, you know, I had, um, I've had this question before and I've probably shared it, but I'm going to share it again, you know, as I've been taught by some of the last traditional elders, um, one in particular out at Hopi Nation, is that an eclipse is a very sacred time. It is a time where uh, these two celestial bodies, you can consider them grandma and grandpa or ma and pa, and they get to cross each other's path. So imagine in your mind's eye that this is that moment that you get to see each other and communicate with each other. And it's really a welcoming for everyone to be in meditation and repose and prayer and just to really within themselves realign themselves um, because of this moment where the yin and the yang get to dance for a brief moment, such a brief moment by our perception. So with that being said, no matter how you chose to experience this eclipse or future ones, I would recommend, you know, even abiding in this moment with me here or whenever you intercepted is that you can, you know, Uh, in this moment really go inward and listen the the new moon in general works on us leading in and leading out so no matter when you intercept this segment it's the perfect time for you and if you can think about uh, just the idea of being respectful of something that maybe as a two-legged human you might not understand is that there's so much out beyond that we don't understand and sometimes our words get in the way trying to state things that we think we know and for me over the course of this lifetime um, I would say that I've learned more and more about my eternal being and my eternal being is very um traditional in the sense that even me sharing something from a traditional elder, I I understand now the importance of holding uh, inner value system and adhering to it and abiding by it. In this moment in time, we're at a deep phase of degradation and there is a resurgence of people connecting to their spiritual or religious practices. And that is the the doorway, the threshold to re-engage with your soul. What I would encourage everyone is to understand that the degradation that we are all experiencing in this moment is not exempt from your theological practices or your agnostic practices or your atheist practices or your natural practices. Nothing's exempt. See, what indigenous culture can remind you that we all have an aspect of ourself in this tapestry of the cosmos. And no matter what words or framing or guidance you're using to help you have strength in your life, that's beautiful. 
and allow that to be so. However, I encourage you all to take a step back and realize that if in this present moment you don't have access or it wasn't meant for you to have access to really lineages that have been passed down orally, that it's a time for you just to listen and maybe use the direction of your faith or your non-faith to listen from. However, most of what has been written for us is part of the degradation that we're participating in. So we can't have one truth over here without it impacting another truth, because this is a woven tapestry that's interdependent upon each other and all the elements, all things that go in. And so it gets confusing and it can be disorienting and sometimes cause that cognitive dissonance that I've spoken about because it's hard, especially around that word belief to reorient yourself. However, it's one of the most deepening and humbling process to go deeper into your practices. And the tenant that I would say is universal is really the act of love and kindness. And when we're in love and kindness, many things fall away. When one is in fear, oppression, obedience, many things constrict, many things tighten in the mind, the heart, and even keep us from understanding our eternal self. And so this might be hard for some to hear that they have to be submissive to something, oppressed by something or someone, or even a belief system. I want to remind each and every one of you that you are pure. You were pure when you arrived. You will be pure when you, will leave, you leave. And any actions that you've taken that are impure, meaning that they've caused harm to others or yourself, are yours to reconcile. There are no free lunches. There's a simple lawful law, and that's called cause and effect. And sometimes it's hard to stand in right action with yourself because of the wounds and the distance that you've traveled to here. However, that's the practice. Can you be in right action even when you meet adversity, even when you meet perceptual hardships or troubles caused by yourself or another. And the simple remedy for each and every one of you is love and kindness. And if you read scripture that echoes that and that provides you solace, then see through with that path. However, I caution each and every one of you to grasp at any written words as an attempt to be above anyone else or as an attempt to give you a false sense of security and exemption from cause and effect. So for the majority of you humans out there, you have been held in a state of deception. And so I would say you've all done your best. You really have. And the, the micro offenses and defenses you have with one another are merely just that. They're micro. And it's your choice if you want to make them bigger and bigger, you know, make that metaphorical mountain out of an anthill or however it goes. So with this uh, moment, with this new moon intersecting two bodies that will transmit to us, not just in this few moments that they get to cross paths, but it'll continue if you choose to listen. And even if you can recall a glimpse of how you were feeling this morning, 
and what was present with you. That's what I encourage you all to do with every new moon is to listen deeply. You know, the, the moon is our really our only mile marker that we have. Otherwise, we don't know where we are in any given moment, you know, and the sun is our second mile marker to get through a day. But that moon, la luna, the feminine is there to guide us through each cycle and works with el sol, the sun, the fire that helps sustain the life here in this earth plane. So as I'm passionate about, it's helping people um, come into rhythm with themselves and the cycles that are part of this world system. I encourage you in this moment to call upon peace from within. Anywhere that you don't feel peaceful inside, not outside, inside, Anywhere that you are not at peace, examine it if you so to choose. And the outside reflections that maybe echo to you or trigger you and perceptually create an unpeaceful moment leads you to your inner landscape leads you to maybe, wow, this external mirror is showing me where my pain exists inside and can I make peace there? And sometimes that making peace from the inside out, once that happens, will, not sometimes, always, once you make peace inside, it starts to shift and change your exterior landscape. Sometimes in beautiful, miraculous ways, other times it might bring forth a little sadness or grief because there's a let go. And that's the very much the sentiment of this lunar cycle is la luna is welcoming you. The mother is welcoming you just to make peace from the inside out. And as you make peace, there might be some grief. And the Cosmic Mother welcomes you to cry. Cry and let it go. Let it flow into the river. And the Cosmic Mother welcomes you to take responsibility for you. No amount of trends or uh, manipulations through the World Wide Web or manipulated history are going to explain the process of you making peace with yourself. And when you know thyself, when you truly know your eternal being, you become comfortable in this gift of a human body that you were given. This moment for all of us is about understanding that our soul carries a wisdom and that if you take the space to get to know, and this isn't a fast pace, this is a a slow meander to be patient and respectful and listening to your eternal being. And if you think about how out of sync the external world is to that process, you will start to reflect and be like, wow, every single moment I'm being asked to move quickly, to adopt new ideas, to to identify with this, that, or the other, to take a side here, there, and the other. When you haven't even spent the time to listen from an eternal space, And just like this, eclipse is perceptually brief in a cosmic sense. It's a long, slow waltz. It's a moment to gaze into 
the opposing force. It's a moment to share that what has been collected, not just by the father, but by the mother, not just by the grandfather, but by the grandmother. We are not moving into an era where control, dominance, and oppression will continue. We are not moving into an era where one gender or the other is above another. We are not moving into an era where one race is above another. We are not moving into an era where we carry all the past forward on our back as a victim of something that we truly co-created. We are moving into a passage where you're all being invited to be in union from within, to honor and respect that which was given to you as a resource, first being your relationship to yourself and to the world around you. You are being reminded in this moment, if you so to choose to listen, that you are sacred, you are divine, you always have been, and you always will be. And if you choose to rise up in that divinity and show up in that divinity each and every day out of love and kindness, it has nothing to do with anything written. This is your true nature. It always has been, and it always will be. So, if inspired today, I want you to listen deeply for yourself. Examine where you are not at peace. Welcome in peace internally. You do not have to know how, where, when, why. Welcome that peace to be with you. And then from there, if there's grief around having to let go of that which keeps you out of peace, I welcome you to release it. Understand that when one releases something that is contributing to your inner dis-ease, it doesn't mean that it's going to be gone forever. We are eternal beings, and just like the sun and moon get to cross each other's path every so often, you will cross those beings path again or those situations again. And you will have greater wisdom on how to show up with them and for yourself. So may each and every one of you be gentle with yourself. May you surrender and soften your gaze internally. May you deeply listen and maybe take many hours of silence or a day or a few days of silence if you can, releasing the spoken word, releasing the thoughts, and open your cosmic ears. So with that being said, I welcome you all to come up into an upright seated position. Taking a deep breath in and out. Again, inhale. And exhale. Another one, inhale, and exhale, continuing to breathe in and out, and allowing yourself to be present with your breath in this moment. If any thoughts come in, just merely allow them to float through. And if you engage with them, just bring yourself back to focusing on your breath. Taking a deep breath in and out.
gently from there, I welcome you to gently lean back and recline or move fully into Shavasana, a prone position on your back with your palms facing upward as we transition into receiving sound. As you settle in, just take a nice gentle breath into the heart. and out again inhale and exhale and one more inhale and exhale And then continue to follow your natural breathing pattern.
Taking a soft, gentle breath in and out of your heart center, gently breathing in and out. Again, inhale and exhale. Another one, inhale. And exhale. And then gently from there, welcoming you to breathe in and out. Mm. 
and allowing yourself to be where you're at and when you're ready, rise up into a seated position. And I encourage each and every one of you to stay a little bit longer if you have a journal or just want to be and contemplate how you can welcome in more peace from the inside out. That will be a beautiful effort. And if you don't completely understand what that means, I encourage you to observe your words towards yourself and others. Observe your thoughts towards yourself and others. Those will show you where you're not at peace and then work from there. If you have questions, please leave them below or send me an email. And I want to remind you that there's a simple aspect, as I mentioned earlier, it's love and kindness. And that love and altruistic way of being with one another is truly the most simplistic way to honor yourself and others. And so if inspired, may you get to know your divine aspects of yourself, meaning those gifts that you were intended to be of service with self and others. And may you serve with them and may you take time out of each day to be of service to yourself and others. Be kind. Each and every one of you matter. We're at a beautiful tipping point. Lean into it. Lean into the possible. Until next time, I want to thank Random Rav, Kadri Scott, Dante Marino for being here and being part of all of this. And I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the space to go inward, taking the space to listen. I love you all, each and every one of you, even the rambunctious ones. Until next time, this is Suzanne signing out with a full heart, a gentle smile, a deep bow, and a namaste. Be simple. Love, watch your face